people come back. Our next speaker, I have the honor of introducing Ken Cuccinelli. Ken Cuccinelli was sworn in as Virginia's Attorney General on January 16, 2010. Prior to that, he served in the Virginia Senate from 2002 to 2010 and practiced law in Fairfax. Mr. Cuccinelli graduated from the University of Virginia, an engineering degree, and he holds a master's in law degree from George Mason University. Please join me in welcoming the Attorney General. It is a pleasure to be here with you all, and, and uh, as always, you fill the room. It's good to see so many folks who've shown up in Richmond. Um, I found that uh, the transition from Senate to the Attorney General's office uh, around noon every day, I have this intense feeling that there was some place I was supposed to be. It gradually went away, and I gradually got the more Attorney General's perspective around noon of those days of, oh my gosh, they're coming back. And, uh, and uh, so that's been a little bit of an adjustment. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the work all of you do in each of your communities. You heard the schools I've been to. I grew up in Fairfax. I now live in Prince William County. My wife grew up in Fairfax. Uh, that was probably Marty. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and grew up up there as well. And we're raising our children there uh, as well. So we're, we're deeply rooted here in Virginia and happy with that. We're, Love this state, love the Commonwealth, and, and we love our part of it. But uh, appreciate the work you all do in your communities to try and make them as good a place to live as you possibly can. And as AG, it's a huge priority for me to try to make that as easy for you as possible. We, as you know, do an awful lot of work helping particularly your constitutional officers in your localities and understand the challenging times you all are facing. I mean, one of the changes going from the state senate to the Attorney General's office as I become an agency head. And so I get to weigh into the budget discussions in much the same way as all the other agency heads at the state level and in a manner that you all deal with in your localities as well. And we, we have a couple of parts of our budget, but the biggest one is the general fund piece. And when I leave a year from now as Attorney General, the general fund portion of my budget will still be smaller than when I arrived, so four years later. So I understand the pressures of those budgets and we have made our adjustments. We've closed a couple of offices. Uh, we have not filled some positions that were open, uh, but we have also made some internal changes that we believe have helped us have happier employees. I am pro-happy. Uh, and, uh, and I believe to improve the work, the quality of the work that we have been producing for all of our agencies and all the many clients that we have in our office. Um, despite that shrinkage in one area, healthcare fraud, we have expanded our effort. This is the biggest section in my office when I arrived and we have increased it by more than 50%. And in the, my three years, we've brought more than $80 million back to the general fund to be used for healthcare for the poor. Uh, it isn't just that people are stealing money from the public till, it's that they're t stealing it from that portion of the budget that is what we set aside to take care of families who can't afford that themselves. And we've recovered this money to ensure we can continue to do that. This unit was 30 years old in October, and prior to my arrival, they had brought in, in court awards. Now, cash dollars and how this all gets counted is a little funny, but about $800 million. And since that time, we've brought in over another billion just in my three years. We have other states that come here to train. We have other states that we're effectively doing consulting with to help them stand up their health care fraud units because that is such an enormous problem for us at the budget level. And for the people of Virginia, that's over $7 billion of our budget every year. And it, the federal government estimates about 10% of that is either fraudulently paid out or is tainted with fraud in some way. And we have been very aggressive in attacking that. One of the new things that we have also been attacking in my office since I arrived as AG is human trafficking. 
Uh, don't let the name fool you. It isn't just moving people around. It is also picking up runaways. It's recruiting girls right out of your high schools. Um, we've had this uh, in different parts of the state. We've noticed a tie-in with gangs, and we have begun training around the Commonwealth for prosecutors. This is not an easy case to spot. For line officers, be it deputies, be it uh, police officers, and also for victim witness advocates. They are so important in these cases because particularly the women involved, they're more often victimized than anyone else. They don't feel like they're going to end up anywhere different, whether they go to jail or whatever the process may be. Part of what the people running these rings do is brainwash them and convince them of that. So if that's what you believe and you're sitting there being asked a question by a police officer, you're not going to say anything that's going to make that landing harder for you when you get there. We have to give them honest hope that we can help them get on another path. And we have focused a lot of time and effort getting the victim witness advocates who are really the best tie for them to get them the resources they need and to get them confident that they can get out of this horrific trap that they're in. And that critical element has been integrated to our training with prosecutors and line officers. Uh, this is uh, not just illegals being trafficked, it is not just uh, you know, poor people drifting across the country, runaways, although the people running these rings have gotten awfully good at finding and picking up runaways. Uh, scary how good they are at it, how quick. Um, but it's also recruiting people, as I said, right out of high schools. Um, in Fairfax, the biggest case we've had was with five gang members. In the Crips case, uh, one of the girls that was recruited out of one of those schools had a 3.9 GPA. Uh, this is, you know, don't, don't fall into a stereotype trap of how you, how you view this problem. Um, they use Facebook, they use Backpage, they're very sophisticated, they're very aggressive, and what they're doing is inhumane to a degree that is hard to describe. Um, we are very aggressive in dealing with this. The Attorney General's office has become the hub in Virginia in addressing this. We have been in many of your communities already doing training, uh, for a, including just straight community training. And I've done some of this myself as well to educate the public about this problem. We've also uh, been dealing with an issue that has been a priority for me since long before I ever ran for office as a state senator in Fairfax, and that is mental illness. It is back high on the radar for many of the reasons it popped on the radar after the Virginia Tech tragedy right here in Virginia. But we have a lot of work to do in this area. Uh, I've worked in this area as an attorney for many years and am now working on it from an attorney general's perspective, and you can expect to hear more on this um, later on. Uh, I'm running for governor, you all know that, and it's going to be part of that discussion as well, because a big part of this is, is dollars. Where are our priorities? And, and in my view, this needs to be a higher priority. In fact, right now I'm supposed to be at uh, the governor's task force uh, that he put together after the Sandy Hook tragedy. Uh, that's where I'm going to shuffle out to, so pardon me if I don't stick around. Uh, I'm late already, so uh, I, I don't want to overdo that. We've also been prosecuting child pornographers. We're now prosecuting more people on a regular basis than ever before, two to three convictions a month. We've prosecuted more people in the last two years than any two-year history period of the AG's office. And this is an important crime for us to go after because these people, while right now they may be consuming child pornography, the statistics are rough to nail down, but 30 to 50% of them will act out on a child or will attempt to if we don't interdict. And we are very, very aggressive. We're pulling more images off the internet than ever before. We're prosecuting more of these folks than ever before. And we're doing it at an ever-accelerating rate. We believe this is some of the best crime prevention that we can do to keep children safe. And we're very motivated to do that. We uh, also, not surprising, are still going after gangs the way we always have. We've gotten more longer sentences than ever before, literally hundreds of years in a couple of cases. Uh, the longest one we got was down in Newport News. It was life plus 237 years. <clears throat> now, in July, America will be 237 years old. 
so that's the kind of scope. I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, but that took very close cooperation with that police department, the Department of Corrections. There's a lot of connections that have to be made here uh, to make that case work. We also have put a lot of focus, prosecuting them is, is fine, it's well, it's part of our job, but we want to keep kids from going in these gangs in the first place. And we spend a lot of time, me personally, in schools, talking to kids. We've created some resources. The most recent one we've added is called The Big Lie. It's a DVD. For those of you, and all of you do it in one way or another, who interact with children, you ought to watch this. It's 30 minutes long. There's a previous resource from our office called The Wrong Family. For you all, for educators, for law enforcement, for adults. The Big Lie was made for kids. And it starts off with an interview with a gang member. These are not actors. And he walks through what he's going to say to that kid to get him to join the gang. And so the interviewer walks through this process, and there's a little bit of a lull, and he says, so is any of that stuff true? And he says, no, none of it is. None of it. Thus the name, the big lie. We would much rather keep them out and dry up the gang's pipeline and keep those kids with options in life that they won't otherwise have than do the best prosecutions in the world. Uh, that, that is a high priority for us. Uh, means an awful lot to me. Uh, I mean, we, in the first three years, where the Gang Association in Virginia gave out a Prosecutor of the Year Award, my office won it two out of the first three years. We're very good at that. But we'd rather put ourselves out of business. And that takes a lot of cooperation. A lot of it goes on in y'all's communities, whether it be boys and girls clubs, a million other ways that we interact with, we cooperate with, and we want, to, we want to keep doing that with you. Public safety is a big deal in the Attorney General's office, but it isn't the only thing. We believe we need safe communities if, if we're going to be able to have economic opportunity, economic development, and, and uh, growth in making Virginia an even better place to live and raise a family. So while the economy strains all of our budgets, yours and mine alike, um, we're committed to prioritizing these kinds of issues so that Virginia is a safe place, so that we can then turn to growing our economy. And I've been fighting on that front as well since I became AG. We just won a case, it is still January, it's earlier this month, with Fairfax uh, against the EPA, where they were overreaching outrageously. And the court found they were overreaching outrageously. The cost of that between the Virginia Department of Transportation and Fairfax County and had they gone on to other counties would have been in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to put up retaining pools, more permeable surface, taking people's homes and businesses to do it. Uh, that is not what we need to be doing in a strained period of time, particularly in localities like Fairfax that aren't slackers in environmental stewardship. Uh, that has not been a problem. Uh, why the EPA picked Fairfax and picked that creek, I do not know. But when we see that kind of overreach that threatens uh, your ability to do land use, your ability to do economic development, um, we have responded. And it isn't just the EPA, but that is the most recent example. Uh, statewide, we've also fought off the National Labor Relations Board with other states and done a number of other things that we're doing to preserve Virginia's economic opportunity so that you all can go and be aggressive ambassadors for economic development where you live and in the communities you serve. Um, a big part, I tell people the governor's job on economic development is to be on offense and the lieutenant governor. The attorney general's job is to play defense. We have a good state to do business in. We have a good, it's a good place to raise a family. My job is to preserve as much of that as Attorney General as possible and to keep you all free to keep doing what you've done so well over the years and that is grow in your own communities and make your communities a better place to live. 
that's something that I've done as, as Attorney General. It is a focus that I'll, I'll make the shift from defense to offense. If I'm able to win this governor's race, I would appreciate each of y'all's support. I'd be uh, crazy to leave here without asking you all for your votes. Um, we're going to have nine and a half months of discussion here, nine months in a week, and five hours and 30 minutes, but who's counting? <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, I would appreciate the support of each one of you in, in that undertaking, and I expect I'll get the opportunity to talk to many of you as we cross and recross Virginia, something I've never stopped doing really since 2008. Um, I'm doing all I can to protect our citizens through new and innovative public safety programs by being aggressive to protect our, your freedom, our freedom, and our opportunities here in Virginia, and by defending you, you all from illegal, unfunded federal mandates. I will tell you, I am learning these lessons. I do not intend to become a governor who then does the same thing that I complain about the federal government doing to states to you all. So that is, uh, that is something I take very seriously, and you are welcome a year plus from now to call me on it. Um, and I rather expect that more than a few of you would be willing to do that if I get out of line in that respect. So we're going to continue to fight to make Virginia a better place to live, to work, and raise a family. And as much as we possibly can, we want to partner with you all to do that on a daily basis. Virginia is a great place to be, a great place to grow up, a great place to live, and a great place to work. But we can always, always, always do all of that better. And I look forward to working with each of you all over not just this year in the Attorney General's office, but I hope a few more years in another office to continue to keep doing that. Thank you very much for inviting me here today, and God bless every one of you. Thank you.